Hello and welcome to week 22 of the 2024 Baking Challenge. I promised you something sweet and something more simpler than the ravioli from last week, and here it is, velvet pound cake. Now I love pound cake. Sara Lee frozen pound cake is like the holy grail, right? But let's make it from scratch because I've never done that before and maybe you haven't either, so let's, let's learn together. Grab your ingredients and let's bake. Hi, future Katie here, just popping in because past Katie forgot to tell you, you need to get your eggs, your butter, and your cream cheese out. It needs to be room temperature. I got mine out this morning. That's five eggs, 14 tablespoons of butter. Good Lord, that's a lot of butter. Who am I, Paula Dean? Anyways, and three ounces of cream cheese. If it looks a little chaotic in here, that's because it is. I have to kind of rush through this because I have an appointment and had other things taking up my morning. First off, preheat your oven, but wait, open your oven, make sure there's nothing in it, and also make sure that your rack is set in the middle. You may have to take a rack out to make that happen. 325 degrees, so we're gonna preheat. This is gonna be a very long bake, so long, low, and slow. Next, you're gonna need a nine by five loaf pan. Now, I don't have one of those. Um, and I just realized that this morning while I was tearing everything apart looking for one, what I do have is vintage Pyrex. It's eight and a half by five by two. It's gonna have to do. So you're gonna lightly grease your nine by five loaf pan. And uh, I am going to put a link below for the loaf pans that I am going to buy. Um, this afternoon because everything seems to be nine by five and I don't have any of those. Okay, next electric mixer, stand mixer, or get those arm muscles going because we're gonna get into it here. Okay, your butter should be room temperature. We are having 14 tablespoons, which is so much butter. I need a spatula. Oh, where are all of my good spatulas at? You know what, I'll get a mediocre spatula. Isn't it crazy how you have the good spatulas and then the crappy spatulas and then somewhere in between? Yeah, not everybody does that, just me. I know it can't possibly just be me. So I got, the, I set an alarm yesterday so that when I got up this morning, I would remember to get my eggs, my butter, and my cream cheese out because it is supposed to be room temperature. So all this has been sitting out. Now the cream cheese is 85 grams or three ounces. And because cream cheese is one of those things that, like cream cheese and butter, right? I know a stick of butter is eight tablespoons um, and cream cheese is eight tablespoons, but the, the um, oh, what am I thinking? The little measurement lines never quite line up on the paper wrapping. So I'm gonna go ahead and weigh my cream cheese. I love this kitchen scale. I use it every single week. I will link it in the description below. All right, so what do I say? 85 grams of cream cheese. It's even harder to do when it's room temperature. You could measure it out ahead of time, which would have been really smart for me like I did with the butter. Um, but I really, I don't love cream cheese. <laughs> it's like cheesecake. You're not gonna find a cheesecake on this list. Um, I did not choose any cheesecakes because I don't like cheesecake. It's pretty rare for me to enjoy a cheesecake. Sometimes I like it, but just a little bit. See, this package went crazy. Um, all right, 85 grams, three tablespoons, should put it right about here, or three ounces. That might be too much. No, that looks, let's see how good my eyeball math is. That says 68, so, but there's some in here. Let's see. Oh my gosh, now I'm just getting cream cheese all over everything. And that was not my intention. I'm just gonna, 75, 83. So close. I'm just gonna scrape up what's left in here on the edge. 
And hopefully, come on, I'm trying to be exact with it. Eh, 85 and some change, good enough for me. That's gonna go in here and we are going to cream the um, cream cheese and the butter together. Wow, I've already got a mess and we're only two ingredients in. Now, I know we have to beat this and it needs to get to stiff peaks. I wasn't sure which option to go with here. Um, I think I'm actually gonna get the other attachment, the other paddle. And I might switch to the whisk um, in a little while. Lift up. Everything on there. All right, that's gonna go for a couple minutes. High speed until they're very light and fluffy. So I'm just gonna let that do its thing. Move some of this mess around. I'm gonna keep my little plate out to See, I hate making a mess on the counter, so I always like to have a little plate to put my spoons on. We have a spoon rest somewhere. Um, oh my gosh. Sorry for the scratching. I got bit by mos mosquitoes, several. And it's making me crazy because I'm highly allergic to them. Bananas. A little bit longer on that. Okay. All right, we're gonna add the salt, which is three-fourths of a tablespoon, tea, teaspoon, three-fourths of a teaspoon. I have my one-fourth here, so I'll do three of these. One, two, three. You're going to add your sugar. How much sugar do we need? We need a cup and a half of granulated sugar. Oh, you're heavy. Cup and a half of granulated sugar. I have my half cup, so I will need three of these. That is a lot of sugar. I guess I didn't realize that pound cake was so sugary because it just doesn't, doesn't come off that way. Although it's been a while since I've had pound cake, so maybe it is. Right, a cup and a half of, yeah, cup and a half of granulated sugar. All right. And we are going to add our flour, which is one and three fourths cup of flour. Now, I goofed. I did not realize that I was so low on all purpose flour, uh, but I did finally get some bread flour. So, ah, that's, that's what I've got going on here. Try to gonna, gonna try to get what I can out of here. Hopefully I can get a half a cup at least. Yep, there's my half a cup. Oof, that's, yeah, it's done. Oh, let me turn off my scale. Okay, bread flour it is for the remaining half cup and three fourths of a cup sad. I just, I can't tell you the last time I ran out of flour. It's kind of something that I use an awful lot of. I don't want to mix my all purpose in with my bread flour. <laughs> so, um, I don't know what this is going to do to the texture of this cake. It might completely screw it up. Um, there's really only one way to find out. And then my three fourths of a cup. Three fourths, yeah. All right, there we go. That's done. Oh, and your teaspoon of baking powder. One whole teaspoon of baking powder. All right. It's getting a little thick in there, but that's okay because we got eggs coming up. Remember your eggs should be room temperature. I'm going to go crack my eggs into a bowl. Remember, do not crack your eggs directly into whatever it is that you are making because even store-bought eggs 
can end up being bad. And then you've ruined your entire batch of whatever is in your bowl. So don't do that, crack them in a bowl. All right, I'm gonna go do that, we'll be right back. Okay, now the batter's gonna be stiff because you added all of that dry stuff without any wet stuff. Now we're going to add the extracts, which is a two, tea two teaspoons, oh, only teaspoons? of vanilla extract and a fourth a teaspoon of almond extract. We all know I don't do almond. So we're just gonna substitute with vanilla. And that was a little too much vanilla, but what are you gonna do? All right, now the eggs. You're gonna do this one at a time. If you put your eggs in a bowl, grab a spoon, and just scoop one at a time. Most of the egg white will come with it, okay? And you're going to add the eggs one at a time after they're all combined. Now listen, we've done this a few times now. We did this with the ravioli from last week. Um, something else too recently, I can't remember what though. So that's combined, and you'll know it's combined because you won't see the yellow streaks anymore. And if you need to pause and scrape the sides of your bowl, then pause and scrape the sides of your bowl. No big deal. I'm getting a battery warning on that camera because I forgot to charge it. That's all right, we'll be done here in just a minute. See, I don't know if you could see that, but it just kind of gloops the egg white right with the egg yolk when I pull it out. Okay, this is pretty and it smells good. Now our finished batter should be extremely light and fluffy. Okay, light and fluffy. The baking directions on this is where it's gonna get complicated. The cake recipe itself, not a big deal. The baking recipe, it's involved, but it's not complicated. All right, I only have one more in here. So be prepared. You're gonna have to set a few timers and you're gonna need to keep a watch on it. Um, whenever I have something that I'm baking like this that needs to be tended in the middle of what it's baking, I have timers set all over the house because I'm gonna get distracted while I'm wandering around. Oh my gosh, this does look so light and fluffy. Here, let me add this last egg and then I'll show you. So check that out. That is definitely light and fluffy and it smells so good. I think we're pretty well done here. I will scrape the sides just to be sure because you don't know what's hiding in there. See, I do have some dry stuff on the edges. So make sure, even when you think it's done, um, before you start spooning it into the bowl, see, there's my dry stuff. Um, you're gonna wanna grab your spatula and really get into the bottom, scrape your sides really well, and then mix it again until all of this heavy stuff is in, see, I have dry stuff everywhere. Oh, KitchenAid, you let me down. So make sure you're getting all of that before you take the bowl off or you stop mixing. Okay, I finished mixing after I scraped the sides. It took about two or three minutes to get all of the stuff that I scraped incorporated into this batter, but it is light, it is fluffy, it is pretty, and more importantly, it smells really good. I never did end up using my whisk. Okay. Now on to filling the nine by five loaf pan that you should already have greased. Okay, la, 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 la. spoon the batter into the prepared loaf pan. And it does say to spoon. That's what I'm going to do. Look at me following the directions mostly for the first time in a while. It is, I don't understand, it's a dense batter, but it's light and fluffy at the same time. It's kind of strange. Um, I'm going to do my best to get it all. Oh, no. I just lost a lot of it on the counter. Oh, no. That's going to be awful to clean up. Right on my bamboo 
stove cover. Oh, geez. Oh, man. I try really hard not to get anything on here because it's bamboo and it's porous. And that kind of, I mean, we don't use this as like a cutting board or anything. It's just a cover to keep things off of this range. Um, so, but I try really hard not to drip things on there. And I think this is the first time I've done it. Oh man, that is seriously annoying. Although, you know what, because I'm using a smaller um, loaf pan, I was really worried about fitting all of the batter in. So maybe that's fate stepping in to help me out just a little bit. I'm not going to say no to fate helping me out, but I am going to move my bowl a little closer while I finish scooping my batter and maybe I won't have giant spoonfuls. It's a very pretty batter. Um, I don't know. Like, I know it's weird that I consider some batters to be prettier than others, but this one is just really pretty. It, uh, it is light, it is fluffy, it, yet dense at the same time. <sighs> okay, almost there. Okay. Let me clean up my counter mess and then let's talk baking. Okay, I have my little mess cleaned up and here is our cake batter. Now, remember I said it's an odd bake. This is a very long bake. We're talking 85 to 90 minutes, okay? So you're gonna set your timer for 85 minutes, but you're also gonna set a secondary timer for 60 minutes because at 60 minutes, you need to tent this with foil. What I recommend doing is fitting your foil on here and getting it in the tent shape so you don't actually have to pull your cake out to do it. Don't burn yourself, please. If you need to pull your cake out, go right ahead. I'm probably gonna have to do that. My hands are not working well today. So at 60 minutes, you're going to tent it. You're not gonna cover it completely flat. It needs to be a tent because the cake is still going to rise a little bit you're gonna get some lift on there and you don't want it touching the foil because that's going to affect the baking process. Okay, put your cake in the oven, set a timer for 85 minutes and set a second timer for 60 minutes and I will see you back when we do the tenting process. Okay, I wanted to show you real fast. It is domed up in the middle. So I just tented the foil over. It's not sealed around the edges and there's plenty of head space in between there so that the cake can continue rising. Okay, cake timer has gone off. I ended up needing to add five minutes to mine, so it's been in for 90 minutes. Um, I'm sorry I didn't video the foil tinting process. I just couldn't juggle the camera and it was lunchtime, so there were people in here and Okay, that looks done to me. Yes, it is done. Okay, so this is done. It needs to sit in the pan for five minutes and then I can move it to a cooling rack. You can serve this warm. You can wait until it cools down. I'm gonna wait until it cools down. Uh, warm cake's just not my thing. So yay, I'm excited to try this. It smells so good in here. This is gonna be amazing. Fingers crossed, but I have a good feeling about this one. Okay, so I had to pull mine out of the oven and then I loosened the edges and then I had to leave. So it's actually been sitting in the pan. It's three o'clock now. It's been sitting in the pan since a little afternoon, uh, unavoidable. Um, so it took Scott and I both a little bit of teamwork to get it out of the loaf pan, um, but it smells really good. It's absolutely beautiful and I really can't wait to taste it so let's see how this stacks up to a pound cake that you would buy at the store it's holding together really well mmm the texture is 
perfect. It is that perfect pound cake, spongy, dense texture. The flavor is light and sweet. <laughs> this is a good cake. Um, it would be better if I had, um, you know, some whipped cream or something to put on there. I honestly didn't think about it. That's how we've always done um, pound cake growing up is a little bit of whipped cream and maybe some fruit. Found a couple strawberries in the garden uh, that the critters haven't picked off, so Malcolm will enjoy that. But I'm gonna call this pound cake an absolute winner. Two thumbs up, 10 stars, five stars. I forget what rating system I put in place. I should really work on that. Um, this is absolutely a winning recipe from King Arthur. I can't say enough great things about it. I will absolutely make this again. Well, that's it for week number 22 of the baking challenge. I hope that you baked along and I hope that your velvet pound cake turned out as amazing as mine did. It's absolutely a winner here. Everybody really enjoyed it. If you would like to join along for next week's bake, be sure to hit the subscribe button below. I will post these new videos every single Saturday between seven and 9 a.m. It just kind of depends on how together my life is. And you should also head over to the Facebook page. That link is in the description below because every Wednesday morning, I'm going to post the ingredients of what we'll be making. That way you have plenty of time to get your shopping done and you can join in the fun on Saturday. All right, that's it for me. I'm gonna go enjoy this cake and I will see you next.